to the mound after nearly a year away with injuries, his presence would surely make Toronto's rotation the very best. In his third start, it appeared Steve's spring training was over. A game three hitter signaled the return of Super Dave. But a funny thing happened on the way to the championship. The big inning started to jump up on him. The ball began to jump out of the park, and losses became more frequent than wins. With the beginnings and losses came frustration, like the day in Baltimore when Steve felt Ted Henry was sticking it to him, and Dave came unglued. A blow-up and another loss. A fit replaced the fastball. Steam instead of the slider. At three and six, nothing seems to be working. Confusion reigns, not confidence. So will it be a Texas turnaround against Nolan Ryan tonight? Y'all stick around to find out. The Bat Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. Brought to you by Lavat Blue. Honest and true, you bet it's blue. And by Esso Associates and Imperial Oil. You're on your way with Esso. And by Diet Pepsi. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. 16 runs and 20 hits for the Blue Jays against Texas in game number one. Tonight we'll find out if they have any offense left for Nolan Ryan. What a treat this could be tonight with Dave Steve against Nolan Ryan. Two pitchers who in their career have been amongst the best and two buck who have fallen upon hard times this year. Dave Steve hasn't won in four. Nolan Ryan incredibly hasn't won yet. So this game has some great significance other than the fact that it's two great pitchers. Well, it certainly does, because both of these teams predicted to be contending ball clubs in their divisions, and Dave Steve has not thrown well. But between starts, he found something in his delivery that has him really upbeat about this start tonight. He's going to raise his arm up, and he feels like that has been the root of his problems lately. They need him to have a good outing. The other hand, Nolan Ryan has pitched well, but hasn't won. He's left games with the lead, but they need Nolan Ryan to return to that stopper role tonight. Whatever he does, it's always a thrill to watch Nolan Ryan. But I have sort of mixed emotions about this start because, well, at this point in his career, he could throw another no-hitter, but it also might be the last time we see him. Well, it might be. At 45 years old, you never really know what's going to happen with Nolan Ryan. He's had leg problems, but he hasn't had any arm problems. He's still throwing the ball well. But you're right, and I don't know if we really appreciate the career that Nolan Ryan has had. We've had the opportunity to watch him throughout his career. Seven no-hitters, and it's exciting every time he takes them out. You never know what you're going to get with Nolan Ryan. Well, let's enjoy it tonight. Grab a seat. The Ryan Express is about to roll into your station. It's Nolan Ryan against Dave Steve next. This is Labatt Blue Jays Baseball on TSN. From Arlington Stadium in Arlington, Texas, it's the second meeting of the season between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Texas Rangers. The Blue Jays won the opener of this three-game series 16-7 last night. And the Texas Rangers go to 45-year-old Nolan Ryan trying to get their first win against the Toronto Blue Jays. And Ryan is looking for his first win of the season. He's winless in his last 13 starts. He's up against Cito Gaston's Toronto Blue Jays with 42 wins. They have three more than last year after 70 games. Tonight's lineup is brought to you by Samsung, the sensible alternative in home and business electronics. Joe Carter, who took a ball off his knee last night, is a designated hitter today. Winfield is in right. Jeff Kent still playing for the injured Kelly Gruber. He's missing a fifth straight game. The bottom of the order, Old Ruth through Lee, had 12 hits, five for extra bases. And that left the manager and hitting coach smiling last night. On a hot, muggy Texas night, Nolan Ryan from Alvin, Texas, gets set to work to Devon White. And he's finally 100%. His leg problems are behind him. He's had Achilles problems. He's had hamstring problems. And now he's throwing well, but still looking for that first W of the year. Gino Petralli is catching him, and Ryan shook off the first two calls from Petralli. There's ball one to Devon White. Lead off man who had a pair of hits last night. 
Already, you can see that it's going to be a tough night to work. It's so hot and humid. Fouled away, one ball and one strike to Devon White. It's been hot all day. It's been muggy and storm clouds have been building and there is a weather warning in effect. There's a chance that thunderstorms could blow through here in the very near future. Nolan Ryan to Devon White, the 1-1 pitch. White bunts the ball along the first baseline and it's foul. One ball and two strikes. This next pitch could be very interesting. Nolan Ryan, like so many power pitchers and great power pitchers like Tom Seaver and Bob Gibson, hate it when somebody tries to bunt on them. And Nolan has always been one to throw inside after a situation like that. His leg injuries have been well documented. So Devon White trying to test him to see if he could move around, tries to get on base with the bunt. I'd be awfully aware of this next pitch. Hasn't had a lot of success against Ryan, and that's the reason he's trying to start things off with a bunt. He's in good company there. Strikeout number one for Nolan Ryan in the 5,571st of his career. And he goes to the curveball. Good break on it. White out in front. You can see he was anticipating a fastball. Got the curveball, and Ryan has his first strikeout of the night. Fastball, sinking fastball, curveball, and a great straight changeup. A lot more pitches than the fastball that he's so noted for. But it's effective. Misses with a fastball to Roberto Alomar. Ball one. Start number 779 for Nolan Ryan. Roberto Alomar had a pair of hits in last night's big victory. Strike one, one and one. Mike Riley is behind a Roberto Alomar calling the balls and strikes tonight. I'm sure it's as exciting for him as it is for the players to be in a game with Nolan Ryan. Inside, two balls and a strike. Alomar was the last out of the no-hitter that Ryan threw against the Blue Jays last year. He struck out 16 strikeouts of that no-hitter. His seventh no-hitter of his career. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Misses. Count goes to 3-1. and one. Last out Nolan Ryan was a complete game against the California Angels, but he still lost. It is 0 for this season. Here's the 3-1 to Alomar. Al Newman, the second baseman, bumps one second time, gets the ball over. Two away. Newman at second base with the put off. Didn't use the play at second base. Let's have a look at the defense in the outfield. It's Kevin Reimer, Juan Gonzalez, and John Cangelosi in the outfield. Dean Palmer, the young third baseman, is doing a nice job tonight. Jeff Houston is starting at shortstop. Al Newman's the second baseman. Rafael Palmero's over at first. Gino Petrali gets a start tonight. He'll call the pitches for Nolan Ryan. Here's Joe Carter. DH tonight. There's ball one. Pounded a ball off his knee last night late in the game. Feels good enough to be into the ball game, but he's not playing in right field. Dave Winfield is there. Here's the 1 0. Swing and a miss by Carter. 1 and 1. Carter's got that left leg really heavily wrapped and padded with some rubber sponge. He's beaten a couple of balls off the leg. Awfully sore. He's got a lot of bruising. You can see the knee with a pad on it and behind that extra padding on the shin itself. Pulled foul, a ball and two strikes. And that's bound to happen to Joe Carter over the course of his career. This isn't the first time he's been banged up like that because everyone pitches him inside and he's apt to foul a few off his legs and feet. Well, he fouled one off in Kansas City that really caused him a lot of 
bleeding inside. He got an awful lot of swelling in that leg, and then he did it again last night when he hit a ball off his kneecap. He was also hit by a pitch last night, so he got a bruised forearm. Here's the one-two from Ryan. Outside, did Carter go after it? Yes. A one-two-three inning for Nolan Ryan. A couple of strikeouts against the Blue Jays. Dave Steve's turn to go to work when we come back. This is Labatt, Blue Jays baseball on TSN. The storm we've been warned about moves closer and closer to Arlington Stadium. And we can only hope that it'll blow right by. Dave Steve out on the mound to go to work against the Texas Rangers, the 34-year-old last one on May the 26th. Tonight he goes to work against Bobby Ballantyne's Texas Rangers with 39 wins. They're third in the West, three back of Oakland. Tonight's lineup is brought to you by Samsung, the sensible alternative in home and business electronics. Julio Franco was hit by a bungle bat last night outside the batting cage. Missed the game, is back in tonight. Ruben Sierra is missing, and so is Pudge Rodriguez. But this lineup is still a formidable, especially Palmer through Paul Merrill, all big RBI men with uh, no fewer than 34. Sierra is available to pinch hit tonight. Franco gets sent to face Dave Steve. That's a big game for Dave Steve. You can see his record, three and six in a very high ERA. He's made some adjustments in his delivery and his arm angle. He's very positive about the effect that it may have on his pitching, and he needs some positive results to build his confidence. He is really down in his confidence right now. So Steve is set to go against Julio Franco, last season's American League batting champion, hitting just 211 through 76 at bats because of an injury to his right knee and yesterday hit on the arm. Was in the starting lineup and then during batting practice was knocked out when hit by a fungal bat. Two and oh, Steve to Franco. his 12th start and the count goes to 3 and 0 Steve will take a little time here already go for a little walk before he tosses the 3 and 0 to Franco now they really threw well and he was throwing in between starts and he was really upbeat about it he needs to have a good inning to start off on the right foot as confident Dave Steve appears to be he's not he needs to have a good outing to boost his confidence and feel good about the way he can contribute to this ball club. Throws a strike and the count is three and two. Steve is often his own worst enemy out on the mound. He gets angry with himself and then loses concentration. Franco hits the ball on a line to Winfield and right, one away. Let's take a look at Dave's delivery and watch his arm angle. He's trying to get it up higher than it has been most of the season, right there. It's still not quite overhead. It's about three quarters, but in previous starts, he was throwing almost sidearm and throwing around his body. His front leg would fly open and his arm would drag behind and that would cause everything to stay up in the strike zone. Here he is against Dean Palmer. Long ball hitting third baseman. Already up to 40 runs batted in. Got his 40th last night. Steve's 1-0 pitch. One ball and one strike. I believe that Dean Palmer is going to develop into a good average hitter as well as a power hitter because he hits the ball to right center so well. What about the strikeouts? Well, that's going to come with his knowledge. He's a very confident young man and very quiet, a student of the pitchers. He'll sit back and learn a little bit about pitchers as he goes along. He'll learn the strike zone. He'll learn to be more selective. But I like his approach. He's got enough power that he doesn't have to pull the ball to hit home runs. And that'll keep him on the ball and ultimately will give him a higher batting average. 75 times he struck out this season. 
this time by Dave Steve Tuaway. This is the slider that caused him so much problem in Baltimore when the umpire didn't call that same pitch to Cal Ripken. Right there, he gets the call for the strikeout. Maldonado, White, and Winfield in the outfield with Carter in the DH spot tonight. Jeff Kent continues to start at third base with Gruber ailing with the shoulder problem. Borders and Steve are the battery tonight. Here's Canadian Kevin Reimer at his biggest RBI night last night. A career high four in a loss. He gave the Rangers a good kickstart with a two run home run, his seventh homer of the season in the first inning last night off Jack Morris. There's a base hit for Reimer. A two out single to right here in the first. Reimer's done a nice job of changing his batting style, bringing in the high Ruben Sierra type kick. Take a look at the timing, keeps his hands back, that's a change up that stayed up around the belt. Reimer hammered it. He was out on the field taking batting practice for what seemed like hours today, and I'm sure that must take its toll on players who come out and take batting practice in this Texas heat. It's getting darker, as you can see. First base for Juan Gonzalez. Ten home runs in this month of June as he faces Dave Steve and takes ball one outside. Just 22 years old and putting up terrific numbers. A lot of people in the Texas organization feel that Gonzalez has better tools than Ruben Sierra. That's a high praise for the 22 year old. Breaking ball in the dirt, 2-0. and oh. Behind borders, as mentioned, Mike Riley is calling the balls and strikes tonight. Daryl Cousins is at first. Joe Brinkman, the crew chief, at second tonight. Terry Cooney is the umpire at third base. Two balls, no strikes on Juan Gonzalez. Kevin Reimer leading off first. Now 3-0. Steve's getting himself in trouble by being a little too fine right off the bat. He's trying to hit the corners and make perfect pitches already, really pitching defensively. You know, at this point, he's just got to forget all that and say, hey, let's just go down the middle, try to pitch ahead, try to stay ahead, and don't worry about making perfect pitches. Gonzalez hits the ball hard to left field. Taken by Maldonado. Reimer's held up at third base. Running into second is Gonzalez. Second and third with two out on the double by Gonzalez. Reimer, I don't think, got a real good jump on that ball. With two outs, he should have scored on that. The ball was hit off the top of the wall. Let's take a look at the location of this pitch. And Steve creates his own problems by falling behind and has to come down Broadway with a fastball. Watch Reimer at first base. He really gets a late break. He didn't break on the swing with two strikes. You've really got to be thinking about that. Don't forget, he's not exactly Carl Lewis going around the bases either. Looks like he pulled up with a leg problem right at the end there. Sure did. And the storm clouds move a little closer. are brewing on the base pads for Dave Steve as well. Reimer at third, Gonzalez at second. And Rafael Palmero is at the plate. Hitting just 253 right now, but he is a 300 hitter to be sure and will get his average up, but he has 34 runs batted in and he's got two runners in scoring position in the bottom of the first here. Ball one. See how the pattern continues. Steve is trying to make the perfect pitch on the first and second pitches, and all of a sudden, it's ball one, ball two. Then he's got to throw a strike. It's a good hit ball club that you've got to pitch ahead to. The big inning has plagued Dave Steve, and he wants to stop it before it happens in the first inning tonight. Waters is out to speak with the pitcher. That was 
a quick meeting. Just reconfirming the signs, I'm sure. Second base, sometimes they switch in the course of a series. Cito Gaston would love to see a good start from Dave Steve. Inside, though, two and zero. Oh. A dangerous pattern of falling behind hard hitters. Here's the two zero to Palmero. There's a strike, two and one. And the pitcher's been beat around his last several starts, he's going to pitch defensively because he's not real sure of the stuff he's taking out. Dave's trying to get a feel for just what he's throwing out there. Pretty good pitch there if it's high. And it's three and one. Well, he's got a base open. And Gino Petrali on deck, hitting 178. The wind is picking up. Loaded. Now Steve knew he had a base open and he threw a breaking ball for the walk but Jim mentioned Petrali a 178 hitter but against Dave Steve 476 10 for 21 over his career and the storms are kicking up the wind is whistling in in a hurry now Brown's crew is getting ready to go to work. The dust is kicking up out on the warning track. Bases loaded. Two away, Gino Petrali at the plate, and it's strike one. People are starting to move for cover, and the players won't be far behind them. Here's the one strike pitch. tough enough for Dave Steve to concentrate without the storm blowing in. And these Texas fans know how fast a serious storm can kick up and they're heading for cup. They've been predicting thunderstorms, 70 mile an hour winds. Here's the one one to Petrali. Foul ball one and two. Sort of an eerie feeling, isn't it? Boy, it really changed. It's cooled off now. You can feel the cool air coming in ahead of the storm. And this is tornado weather. Look at those clouds and the lightning back behind home plate. Steve with the bases loaded and two away in the bottom of the first. A one, two to Petrales inside. Two balls, two strikes. Gino Petrali. 3 2 pitch. Runners going fouled away. And they'll do it again. Petrali started his career with the Blue Jays. He'd like a chance to put his current ball club up ahead in the first inning. One 
to nothing, Texas. Ball forward of Petrali. And out comes the pitching coach, Galen Sisko. Two quick outs for Steve, then a single by Ryan. Double, double by Gonzalez and two walks to Palmero and Petrali, and it's one to nothing, Texas, with two out in the first. Dave's last several starts, he's just not had confidence. Reimer gets congratulations. He singled and comes around to score. But Steve, by pitching defensively and trying to make the perfect pitch early in the count, has gotten himself in trouble with two walks. In each of the last four outings in which he's had so much trouble, the big inning has got him. Three runs in an inning or four runs. The last time against Detroit, the big inning came early. Six runs in the second, and he was gone. Jeff Houston bloops the ball to center field. Devon White in to catch it. And that's all for the Rangers. So Steve avoids the big inning here just barely. A run on two hits and a couple of walks. The bases left loaded. The temperatures drop four degrees. The Rangers are ahead. And Nolan Ryan is headed back to the mound as the storm clouds move ever so close. This is Labatt Blue Jays baseball on TSN. Dirt Devil presents Blue Jays Red Hot Plays. Ready for the perfect vacuum cleaner? Here it is, the new Dirt Devil Power Pack. The convenience of a canister vacuum with a power nozzle that adjusts to any surface. Get power and convenience with Power Pack. It's new from Dirt Devil. September 3rd, 1986, Dave Steve, in the midst of his toughest season, is after career win number 100. Early, he gets Julio Franco on the tail end of a double play. On his way to a seven-hitter, he strikes out Clark, Butler, and Corey Snyder. Dave Steve is 100th Major League win. Another Dirt Devil red-hot play. On the night of a terrific pitching matchup with Nolan Ryan on the mound for the Texas Rangers and Dave Steve trying to right himself for the Toronto Blue Jays, it's too bad that all eyes are straight up in the air right now as these very dark storm clouds move in over Arlington Stadium. The temperature has dropped about nine degrees in the last half an hour to an hour. Now down to 27 degrees Celsius, 85 Fahrenheit. It was 94 not long ago. The wind came in, the clouds have moved in. Number 32, right fielder Dane Winfield. A lot of people have already taken cover. And there's quite a few here tonight, 24,000 for the game last night, but they'll be 35 to 40, I would think, here tonight with Nolan Ryan on the mound. The Ryan factor. Everybody out to see Nolan Ryan. The possibility of a no-hitter, always there. Here's a Hall of Fame matchup to start the second inning. Nolan Ryan to Dave Winfield. And you would think that these two great players have faced each other a lot over the years, but really they haven't, Buck. They kind of crisscross. Dave started out in San Diego. Ryan started out with the Mets, but then came to California for a long time. And when they switched leagues, they overlapped for just one year in 1980. And in the last two years, with Winfield playing last season in California and Ryan here in Texas, they've had a chance to meet. One ball and one strike, Ryan to Winfield. Ryan retired three straight, struck out two in the first. Field. And with one swing, there goes no hitter number eight. What a year Dave Winfield is having. 13th homer of the year, 43rd RBI, and he certainly fits the bill when the Blue Jays ask for a DH and a power hitter. Look at the extension on this swing. Great timing, full extension. And he knew it was gone. I don't care how the wind's blowing. That would have gone out against a gale. Home run number 13 ties the game 1-1. And John Olrood is up. He had a home run last night. Against Jose Guzman. around down on the field. It's an 
incredibly dark overhead. You can hear thunder. We've been able to see lightning. They stop for a moment. The wind dies down, and John Olrood gets set to step back in. More and more people are taking cover. Here's the 1 0 to John Olrood. Outside, 2 and 0. Two balls and a strike. That confirmed by Terry Cooney down at third. Two one on the outside part of the plate. Now that was a count two and two. That was a good fastball. You can hear him grunting all the way up here in the booth. Look at the Orioles in Milwaukee tied bottom of the fourth inning. The second and third place teams are meeting. Holrud hits the ball to left field. Reimer coming in makes the catch. On the line drive to left, Holrud is out one away. Well, Nolan from nearby Alvin has seen a few of these storms blow in and blow over. Undaunted, he's getting set to face Candy Maldonado. Maldonado had a great night last night against all of the Texas Rangers pitchers, the starter Jose Guzman, relievers that work. A four-hit night, average now up to 260. And the production numbers are starting to rise. His fourth homer came in the sixth inning last night. Here's the 1-0 from Ryan. Caught a corner, 1-1. One and, one. and the temperatures dropped a little more. 12 degrees, it's dropped in about 45 minutes. 1-1 one, one pitch, popped up in the air out of play. This has been a hard luck season for Nolan Ryan, no doubt about it, but he's quick to point out that it's not the first time it's happened to him. Remember back in 1987 when he was a member of the Houston Astros, he led the National League and earned run average of 2.67, but he had an 8 and 16 record, and he had a string of 11 starts without a win during that season. Two balls and two strikes to Candy Maldonado. The scouting report on Nolan Ryan for Don Russ, the record this season, and uh, for two starts when he didn't win at the end of last year. Change up fool Candy Maldonado and he strike out victim number three. That's one thing that Ryan has really done here late in his career is his ability to change speeds and get the breaking ball over. He's always had pretty good control with the fastball and would throw it as hard as 100 miles an hour in the prime of his career. But now he has to use other methods. Hot smash to third baseman Dean Palmer. Skipped over to Palmero and first Pat Borders is gone. The game is tied 1-1 after an inning and a half. Thanks to a home run by Dave Winfield, his 13th off Nolan Ryan. We'll go to the bottom of inning number two in a 1-1 tie. This is Labatt Blue Jays baseball on TS.